Season of Discovery Phase 2 updates and tuning are starting already, and they should be coming tomorrow. Some of them actually have been hotfixed into the game already, so let's break down what we're seeing so far, as well as how are some of the classes performing, and how are they expected to perform? Like, is it what we actually thought? Now, first of all, probably the most oppressive class in PvP so far this phase, Balanced Druids have received a nerf. This is the only class that actually received a nerf, and it is specifically focused on PvP nerfing because the Star Surge ability that was critting some people for upwards of 1,800, now that is with Berserking, but upwards of 1,800, it was one-shotting some people and definitely two-shotting most people on a six-second cooldown has been nerfed by 30%. And as an addition, the spell power coefficient within the spell, which was 100%, apparently that was a bug, and it should now be a 42.9% spell power coefficient. Now, I'm not sure if this will go live tomorrow. I believe it will, and we should see some significant reductions to the damage of that ability. But to make it actually worthwhile for druids, which hopefully turns out to be a buff for them within the raids, instead of nerfing them completely to the ground, they did get a compensation, which was making Star Surge actually cause your next Starfire to cause 66% additional damage. So this increases the damage of your normal rotation by quite a bit. Hopefully, this will increase single target DPS and address the issue of balanced druids in open world PvP. The big issue with Star Surge was a six second cooldown, long range. It was an instant cast and it did a lot of damage. All of those together just made basically Boomkins a menace. But of course, we know that's not the only class that's necessarily a menace this phase in PvP. If you look at Shadow Priest, their Shadow Word Pain can crit for 1800 without having to have the Berserker buff. If you look at Warlocks, they can also crit for above 2000 to almost 3000 if they get a strong Chaos Bolt. And if you look at Melee Hunters, if you get in range of them, they can absolutely delete you. Now, this isn't to say these classes need nerfs whatsoever. I think they're actually very balanced, and there's a lot of counterplay to a lot of the things. Shadow of Pain has a long cooldown, and it actually punishes the priests themselves for the damage that it does to themselves. Melee Hunters have zero mobility, so as long as you can get away from their slows with a free action potion or something like that, they're basically dead in the water. And Warlocks have a long cast time. These are just some examples. Obviously, every class has basically a one-shot mechanic right now. With how much we increased in power these phases while our HP did go up, but we still don't have all of the new gear from the raid to drastically increase our HP pools. So we can hit very, very hard. Basically, every class as a one-shot mechanic, except for like Warrior and probably Rogue, so those are going to be a struggle in open world PvP. But addressing the issue concerning nerfs, and if you're worried your class will get nerfed, Agrand replied to me on Twitter saying that they definitely will try to take the perspective of instead of nerfing things too early, they want to bring other classes up to that level. So hopefully things will get buffed, and they're also going to try not to nerf things too early as other classes get more gear because some classes perform extremely well before they even have more gear. One in particular, of course, is Melee Hunters, which are doing very, very well in the raid right now. But if I zoom out, you can see that their pets are still doing about 20 to 40% of their damage. This is if the Hunters still have like Beast Mastery build while being a Melee Hunter or Survival build while being a Melee Hunter. This is also if you have a pet and you're not running Lone Wolf, which most Hunters kind of have to do if they're bringing King to their group. And if that's the case, your pet doing 40% of your damage means you basically have most of your power scaling already, meaning the classes right now that are going to perform significantly better than others, like Hunters, Warlocks, and Shadow Priests even start out very strong, are going to see very different changes as you move forward in the phase and we get more gear. Although one thing that is massively griefing all melee DPS this phase is that the bosses in Nomergan apparently have more more armor than level 60 bosses, including in Molten Core. I'm not sure if this is a bug, but apparently the first two bosses in Nomer have the armor values we expected, 2,262. But all of the mechanical bosses and the ones between there have over 4,000 armor. This is absolutely insane, meaning that you're having somewhere between a 20 to 45% damage reduction from physical DPS. I'm not sure if this was Blizzard's way of nerfing warriors, but this is way more oppressive than we actually saw for all of the casters that had to deal with the 
the resistances in the raid in BFD originally. That was patched out, and I think that was weird to see the resistances, obviously, in the game early on, but hopefully this will be actually addressed or dealt with very soon. That being said, if it's not addressed, then your meta comp will probably look something kind of like this, where you are using mostly warlocks, which will scale ridiculously well in this phase. Some mages, mostly for their AoE damage, they do do very well in single target. And then one hunter, specifically only being brought, not for their damage, but specifically being brought to put up the Curse of Elements debuff for all of the casters. This may actually end up being the meta and we'll absolutely have to see, especially if they do not change the armor values in the raid. And I do want to quickly bring up that the self-found mode for Hardcore will be launching at the end of this month. February 29th will be the self-found mode release. So if you want to get back into Hardcore, have been missing it a little bit and want to play in self-found, then definitely hop in there. Now from there, there is one last thing I want to talk about. PvP event in Stranglethorn Vale is absolutely a bloodbath. I released a video earlier today on how to farm your coins as quickly as you can so you can get all of your epic gear. Now, Blizzard is very aware that there are some issues with the events. I mean, some, but yeah, okay. Blizzard's very aware that there's issues with the event. They actually added a debuff to stop you from camping the graveyards indefinitely so people were immune to giving out the bloods when you killed them for an entire minute. This was way too long and they have now added a new addendum where they are fixing this so that will now go down to 20 seconds and in addition to this you will also be getting a pacify and invisibility effect that allows players that are respawning at one of the graveyards to have enough time to get away from the graveyard instead of just being perma camped right there this should help mitigate the issues of either graveyard camping or even if you aren't graveyard camping people are just fighting right there and just you're never getting any of the bloods because they have that one minute debuff which actually Actually, today got changed to a buff for a little while, so you couldn't even see if other players had that on them. That should be available for you to see, so you know that that player is someone you don't need to be fighting just yet. Now, we also saw one of the issues is that most people are getting pretty much one shot here in this event, and they have added a 30% HP buff to everyone flat if you are here participating in the event. Now, this again should go live tomorrow. It might be hot fixed in today as soon as this video even comes out. So that should help with a lot of the issues of the event. Although Blizzard is aware these are not full fixes. There's still quite a few issues with the event, but at least it's mitigating some things as soon as they can. And Blizzard is also aware that this is a very, very brutal event. You definitely are going to get farmed. You're definitely going to get camped. And if you're here by yourself, it is so much harder to do this. You really want to get in a group specifically with like some shadow priests. Now it was all boomkins and just have them delete people instantly. But shadow priests, just get in a group with shadow priests so you can farm your bloods. But at least the item from the event mostly are not your BIS items. Now, for some specializations, they absolutely are, but they definitely do not cost that much. So it still should only take you ideally a few events or maybe like a week to be able to farm your BIS items or to farm the actual epic items here. Even though they are epic, they are on par with level 40 blues, not as good as items from the raid other than the ones that have unique effects you need to get. And with that, that is everything that has happened at at least for updates so far in Season of Discovery Phase 2. Of course, if you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe. If you want to stay updated with everything, subscribe. I'm gonna go work on a Melee Hunter guide, then I'll hopefully have that to you guys. I'll, I'll be raiding as Melee Hunter tomorrow. Just come hang out on Twitch. Bye.